Okay, guys. So, I've been basically debating about doing these two videos, and I think I will. Um, one's going to be on, you know, depression, mental health, and then there's this one, which is going to be, um, basically kind of my coming out, and how my experience with the LGBTQ community plus community and you know just how I haven't really realized until recently how big of a deal it is to be a part of that and I hope you guys can hear me and stuff I'm doing it in my room everyone's pretty much asleep we're going to bed um so it's just me and the puppies so I got Raven and Gracie here next to me so Anyway, um, so I thought, you know, I've been wanting to do this video for a while, um, and with, you know, a recent conversation I had with my hairdresser, because I just recently went and got some pink streaks put in my hair, and then, um, I'm going to be going to kind of my first Pride, it's not like the official Pride month, but the county I just moved to is doing their own little pride thing which is the first that they've ever done so I'm going to be checking that out um so we were basically talking and we were comparing our coming out stories and she and I basically had very similar coming out stories um so her coming out story was basically um her posting on Facebook of being in, you know, and changing her relationship status and basically being with a chick and her mother private messaging her and, you know, basically telling her she supports her and everything, but she wished that she'd private messaged her first before posting it on social media to which she responded, why? I don't have to do that when I'm with a guy. Which her mom was just like, good point, you know, and we were talking about how that's how it should be and how, you know, we really hope for someday that that's how it is, is it's not such a big deal. You can just start dating whoever and it's not such a big deal. And for me, I didn't really realize how big of a deal it was being a part of the LGBTQ plus community until basically gay marriage started passing and my response was more just wait it's not legal for me to marry a woman <laughs> and that just more has to go with um when i came out so when i came out i came out about 10 years ago when i was about 16. and i remember after i came out and you know we're all like sitting at my aunt pat's um table which god i miss her um and my Aunt Pat just kind of slams her fist on the table and was just like, you're just now figuring this out for yourself. <laughs> like, do you know how long we've been sitting here taking bets, watching you, checking out this chick and going, is she going to go ask her out? Is she going to go ask her out? Like, taking bets on whether or not I was going to go ask this chick out. So... That was basically my coming out story, my coming out experience. And then, you know, basically after that, it was just followed by my family kind of reflecting on themselves and going, why did you feel you had to come out? What have we done to make you feel that way? Because my family, I grew up in a very mixed culture, very mixed background kind of self-made little family you know none of us were really blood for the most part you know a couple of us it was like my mom and I were obviously blood but you know we were just like this little tribe and so we had you know like my godparents who they had their own backstories and then you know we had my aunt Pat who was like a motorcycle chick we had my Irish godmother Sandy we had this, you know, and she was the crazy Silverton lady that stood up to a grizzly bear and, you know, that's a story all on its own, I may say some, tell you guys someday. But we had like this very mixed, very open background of, I guess it was misfits, 
Um, so kind of growing up in that, I never really felt like the need of coming out. I never really understood, you know, I just kind of was seeing, um, everyone else coming out and I just was like, oh, well, I guess I should come out too. And so I did. Um, and then it was just life went on. Um, I ended up dating a guy when I was planning on dating a chick and I ended up dating a guy which you know no problem he is still my high school sweetheart and you know Jeremy if you're watching this I do still care for you and I hope you and your new wife are doing fantastic and your baby girl is so gorgeous like and I really hope the best for you guys <clears throat> But, you know, there's that, and then I got mixed in with other things, and after he and I broke up, and kind of just ended up in this really, it, you know, when I was in it, it kind of was like, I finally had the opportunity to kind of explore my sexuality a little bit more, I had, you know, the opportunity just to explore myself a little bit more, but it was a very unhealthy environment. And I didn't really get separated from that until my divorce. And then I basically um, kind of separated myself from everyone, including, you know, my best friend Kelly and her husband David for over a year. Um, because I didn't know who to trust. I didn't know who to hang out with. I didn't know what was safe anymore. So I had separated myself from everyone for a really, really long time. And so until, you know, I, and even then I had really connected to my sexuality because I hadn't had a chance to. I was just trying to exist and trying to be, and I'm sure if you guys look at past, you know, videos of mine, you will notice that, you know, I was a lot different back then. I was really disconnected and I was just trying to find myself and reconnect and... You know, it did take going and being homeless and living in my camper for over a year and experiencing that and then going through what I've gone through this last year to being where I am now, um, which I will go through that a little bit more in detail in my next video. Um, but I didn't really realize, you know, the impact and... <sighs> Only recently, like, I feel like I've kind of had a second coming out. Um, I've never really been in the closet or anything. But I am definitely being a lot more open. I'm being a lot more blunt. Um, my tour of my new house, I'm sure you guys noticed, I now have a love and pride um, window curtain that is in my bedroom. I have two women, you know, basically kind of holding each other in a very intimate way in my living room. You know, I'm being a lot more flashy about it. I'm being a lot more open with people, even just people on the street. And a part of that is just what's been going on with our president. And, you know, kind of going, okay, you know, the best way, like, I want my kids to grow up and not have to come out and it be such a big deal. They can just start dating a guy. And it's just like if they start dating a chick and it's no big deal and it's just like, okay, bring such and such over for dinner and let's meet them. You know, and it doesn't matter. Like, that is what I would love. And so until these things like gay marriage started passing, I didn't realize because my family was so open and okay about it, I didn't realize until that point, it was illegal for me to marry a woman. And now with Trump, he was just attacking and doing all this stuff for the itty bitty little bit that has, you know, started coming out and being successful and attacking us for our lifestyles when all we're wanting is to just have basic human rights. And that's all it is, is just asking for basic human rights. Because I do have the right to marry my life partner, whether they're the same sex as I am or not. 
yes, there's lines that need to be drawn. Like, yeah, when there's child molestation, yeah, kill those motherfuckers. I am sorry. I am a survivor of molestation, and I want to just fucking kill every rapist out there. You know, I never thought I would have the day where it was time to renew my birth control and you know I do like the three year thing that it goes up in your arm and it's there for three years and you're good I never thought I would have my mother sitting there begging me to stay on birth control you know not because she doesn't think I'm going to start being with a guy no it's because she's scared of rape she's scared I'm going to get raped and I'm going to get pregnant from that rape Never did I think I would be raising my sons in that kind of world and, you know, going, their mother could just be shot just for being gay. And it's really hard and it's very depressing and, you know, I deal with depression on a daily basis and I've gotten to the point I have to watch how much news, how much social media I take in in a day because it will start affecting me really badly and it's because I am a member of these community and it doesn't even have to be a member of these particular communities it can just be sad and depressing when you start thinking about just the basic fact that these are humans other human beings it does not matter what color what race where they're from they are being taken from their homes, they are being arrested, they are being attacked, they are being killed for simply being themselves. And it doesn't matter if they're part of the LGBTQ plus community, it doesn't matter if they're fucking Mexican, Black, Hispanic, Native American, it does not fucking matter. Because they should be considered human beings and treated as such. And yeah, I'm not a Trump supporter. No. I am completely against him. I am completely against his administration. And it has nothing to do with personal things. It has to simply do with the fact I am watching what they are doing to just people that deserve basic human rights and to be treated as such. And then I am sitting here thinking about my coming out story and not realizing how big of a deal it was for me to basically come out and not be attacked by my family and you know not realizing that it you know was such a big deal that I was embraced by the community I lived in at that time I mean that community has completely changed now my hometown I no longer feel safe to go and you know hold the hand of my hopefully future partner and not think that she and I are going to be attacked you know, yeah, I used to, I would feel safe in my hometown, and I don't anymore. I have now moved to a new county and a new town I've never lived in. I don't know anyone, and I do not know how they're going to respond to me, but at the same time, it also makes me want to be more open and more blunt about who I am, because that is the only way to really open people's eyes. I have a coworker who... He has told me that if I had met him back in his religious days about 20 plus years ago, he would have never have talked to me. And he's like, and the fact I would have missed out on such an awesome person just because you were gay, I wouldn't have even associated with you. And it hurts him and it makes him cry when he, you know, he understands where they're coming from, but he also understands my side and he's stuck there in the middle just going, I used to be that. I used to be the person calling you a sinner for just basically who you fell in love with and who you decided to spend the rest of your life with. And so for me, I never realized how big of a deal it was being a part of the, this community. And there's just so much hate, not only outside of the community, but within the community. I never realized I would have a huge group of lesbians attack me for simply being bisexual and want nothing to do with me. And, you know, I've come to find that, you know, that's not the majority of lesbians, but 
when I was a part of this one particular group, it, it sure felt like it was the majority of lesbians, at least in that particular group I was following. And I ended up not following that group anymore, but just, you know, the hate within our own community and it's like, and then when you go out and you see the hate on the streets and you see the hate in the news and you're seeing detention centers being built and you're seeing kids being taken from their parents and you know you're just watching people being denied just very basic human things that I'm sorry it is in our constitution our constitution was written to make sure this doesn't happen and yet we've been allowing it to happen we've been allowing church and state to combine when they're supposed to stay separate for a reason when you have a politician passing a law based off of their religious beliefs instead of based off of basic human rights you have a huge problem and so i ask everyone not just members of the lgbtq plus community but just everyone in general to just start standing up start being more blunt because it's those itty bitty little ripples they may seem small and inefficient but they do make an impact and we need to start doing that there's a reason I'm going to be hanging a rainbow flag on my porch. There is a reason I have all of this stuff within my home. There is a reason I am being open and blunt about my sexuality. Because people need to start opening their fucking eyes and realizing what is going on. So, I love you guys. God is blessed. God bless. And let's just start remembering that whenever we see something just sit there and go what would the goddess do what would god do what would buddha do what would jesus want us to do if you really want to look at it from a religious point of view you gotta really start thinking about treating people as basic human beings because we're supposed to be loving our neighbors love you guys bye